Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lauren Fix, and this is Car Coach Reports. And today we are reviewing the 2020 Land Rover Discovery. Now, if you've ever seen any of our other Range Rover or Land Rover videos, they get us off road because these are the most capable vehicles. I know you Jeep lovers out there are saying, no, it's not. But the truth is, if you need something that's luxurious, you can drive year round on any place on the planet, it's going to be a Land Rover product. We're gonna take it for a ride. We're gonna give you a review of different areas so you know what to expect before you go out and take one for a test drive. Let's go. The standard under the hood of the Discovery is a three liter V6 engine. That's fine, it's gasoline powered, but this is my favorite engine. This is the three liter diesel with 254 horsepower, not a lot, but the torque is 443 pound-feet of torque, which is a lot of get up and go, because you buy horsepower, but you drive torque. This gives you better fuel economy and longer distances between fill-ups, and that's where the benefit comes in, because you also get killer towing capacity, and this is great when you're going off-road, towing, or everyday driving. As we all know, SUVs are like the most popular category. Everybody wants one because you get the ability to ride like a car in a crossover or a truck gives you the utility. You can haul seven people, which you can't do in a sedan. So there's a lot of positives to owning an SUV or a crossover. And that's why they're the most popular segment out there. And Americans love these vehicles and the Brits love these or they wouldn't be building these things and they've been super, super popular. So when you're looking for an SUV, I think it's important to look for not just safety and performance and fuel economy. And the fuel economy in this vehicle combined is around 23 miles to the gallon. You're not gonna find that in a gas-powered vehicle. This is a diesel only. Again, more positives, and I'll talk about that in performance as well. And everybody knows I love diesel. I've got two diesel SUVs, and I just can't get rid of them because they're just awesome. And they go forever. And if you take care of them like any vehicle and you change your oil as needed, they'll last well over 100,000 miles. Yeah, that's true. And that's why people have them, don't wanna get rid of them. And you'll see as I go through every single rating that there are some positives and a few drawbacks. But when you're looking at this vehicle compared to the others, you have to take this one for a test drive. And as we go through each of the features and benefits that might be of interest to you, you'll see why. But at the end, I'm gonna tell you something that this vehicle has that other vehicles don't have, and you wanna stay for that. Torque makes the hugest difference when you're buying a car. So you think, oh, I'll just get the gasoline version. Here's what you're missing. The gasoline version is great. You get gasoline anywhere, you get diesel anywhere, but diesel is about torque, fuel economy, distance between fill-ups, and I'm telling you, there is nothing better than having some serious torque in an SUV, especially if you're hauling seven people and a bunch of stuff. Diesel vehicles are not about zero to 60 runs. It's got get up and go when you need it. When you're on an on-ramp, when you have to get around a tractor trailer, when there's some stupid person doing something stupid in front of you and you have to make an aggressive maneuver, that's where diesel really performs at its ultimate. And I'm really impressed that Land Rover continues to support diesel. Torque, 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 watch. That's pretty darn good for an SUV. This has great performance. I wish it had a little bit more. I will be honest with you, I have a three liter diesel Porsche Cayenne. It's from 2016. And it's been all cleared and proved by the EPA and all that, but it has more power. So comparing it against it is not necessarily a fair comparison, but knowing the other diesel vehicles that they offer, such as in the Velar and the Range Rover Sport, I'm gonna give it a nine for performance because I really think that it offers so much more than some of its competition. First off, just offering diesel. Secondly, the fact it is so much more torqueier than what's available. Now, handling on a vehicle like this has to do with turning radius, how it rides on rough roads, its capability off-road. I mean, seriously, this is the most capable off-road vehicle you can buy. There are five mode settings and they can get you through anything, even a zombie apocalypse, if you think there's one coming. But the fact is there are five drive modes. It's just a dial, you turn it to what you need, and this vehicle is a mountain goat. There is nothing that a Land Rover or a Range Rover can't do. Because of its off-road capability, the fact that you can go through dirt, you can go on rocks, it's such a stable, full chassis vehicle that you can have one wheel off up in the air, and all other three vehicles will pull you out of whatever it is. I'm gonna give it a 10 for handling. I mean, seriously, it is a Land Rover. And like I've said, 
one of the most capable vehicles on the planet. There's a full suite of safety features available in the Land Rover and there really isn't much more you could add. I do like the head-up display. It is an extra charge, it, but the fact is it is right there and it's a safety feature so you're not looking away. Safety features are really important and you should always look at safety ratings when you compare one vehicle to another. And because you're in this price point, that sweet spot of 60 to 75,000, there isn't much more you could add. You need that around view camera. There is an extra fee for that. A lot of manufacturers are including that at no additional charge. Ford collision warning, blind spot detection, cross traffic alert, much of that is available on every single one of these vehicles. For safety, because a lot of the other vehicles in this category include a round view camera and some of the features that they upsell for, I'm gonna give it a nine. When you're driving a large SUV, first thing you know you're gonna be limited to is visibility. So out the front, great, big windshield on the sides, low sills, very much appreciated. But out the back, typically you have a problem with headrests. Well, they've solved that. You can press a button and all three headrests go completely flat, giving you full visibility. That's important. Around view camera, there are some blind spots because this is a good sized vehicle. Remember, you can haul seven people safely. For visibility, I gave it a nine. The seats are really comfortable. Like I said, it's a top priority. You've got lumbar on both sides, so you get a double thumbs up. You've got full adjustability, heated seats, and there are a lot of other options you can purchase. Let's take a look at the second row. Seating comfort is so critical in the second row as well as in the first row. Now we know that it has massaging seats and heated and cooled and full adjustability, including lumbar on both sides. Thank you very much. Second row is really comfortable. Not just the fact that you have tons of leg room, but you can put a third passenger here, makes it very comfortable. Of course, there is an armrest here that has two cup holders. Now, if you wanna to get to the third row, you can press a button and the seats move forward, but even smarter, the passenger seat moves forward as well so that you can get children back there or an adult if necessary. So seating in this particular vehicle is for seven. It's an option. However, for total seating comfort, just all the way around, head, knee, shoulder, tons of storage in the doors, pockets, and including an extra pocket up here, really well done really well designed, and we'll talk about design at the end. I gave it a 10 for seating comfort, and believe me, I don't give those out very easily. When it comes to technology, it's more than just the center screen, which is fully customizable, and it has a lot of choices. You can pick Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, you can adjust the seats, all kinds of settings that are right here in front of you. You can put in your own media, the navigation system, all this is great. Now, the one thing I have to say, it is a bit slow compared to some other manufacturers and their processors. And the technology in front as far as the screens and the off-road technology and capability is so fantastic. It's really hard to rate some of these vehicles because they're so comparable. So what you have to look at when it comes to technology is the navigation screen, how updated is it. In this case, it's pretty basic and it's kind of disappointing because you would think that you'd want something that was a little bit more advanced when you're talking about this price point. And when you're looking at the controls, super easy to use. You push for heated seats, you can adjust anything you need to so you can pick heated or cool depending upon what you want. And also you can adjust everything pretty easily. The technology is great. And of course, some of the little details will go into and in features, but overall the technology and the neat things like you can hide things here like the activity key. The technology does have a few limitations. And so for technology, I had to give it an eight. It's hailing outside. I mean, this is one of those times I'm really glad I'm inside a Land Rover because I know it's one of the safest vehicles. But if there's a zombie apocalypse, I think this is the one I want. There are some features in this vehicle that might surprise you. Some hidden compartments, some very cool options you don't see in other vehicles. And in addition, well thought out, well designed details that you will appreciate, which is why I gave it such a high rating, which you'll hear at the end. Some of the features that I really like, besides the fact the screen is so huge and it's completely customizable, is there's a button here that says open when you press it. The climate control drops down, and there's a storage compartment back here. It hides the activity key, which is a $410 option. Great if you do snowboarding, skiing, whatever, and you leave the vehicle, but it's also a great place to hide your valuables, such as your wallet, a phone, or whatever you might leave in here, maybe some cash. Once you close it, everything works perfectly fine. Going further down, I wish it had a wireless charger. Not necessarily important, but still 
really nice storage. You've got a 12 volt outlet. I love the dial when you start the car, the dial pops up so you can go in whatever drive mode you wish. And then of course you've got your controller further back that has your five drive modes. If you're going off road, you're gonna need all the controls from behind and then you have an electric parking brake. To the right, you've got two cup holders that's completely can cover that and beautiful black gloss. What also is really cool is these two cup holders that currently have this beautiful key fob in that says Land Rover on it, is underneath is some secret storage. You slide it forward, this huge deep storage in here. This is great, plus down below there is a USB charger for a phone or whatever you want to hide in there, an iPad or whatever that might be. Going underneath this nice soft center console is another place you can store your phone or whatever you need underneath is a additional option which is a refrigerated or cooled area great if you're carrying baby bottles you've got to keep something cool maybe your lunch and there's a button to turn that on and off really well thought out these are important features for a lot of people depends again this is your family vehicle you got to use it that way two usb connections a micro sd and another 12 volt outlet lots of details and well thought out the other thing is these armrests they're adjustable there's dials on the end so you can adjust the height of the armrest so it's good for the passenger and the driver using the armrest so if the center console doesn't have your arm on it it allows you to put your arm here and that way you can access the center console you can adjust the temperature of the front row on the center screen but you can also adjust the temperature of the back row it gives you that ability i think that's great you can turn on the heated seats both the bottom and the back from the front seat Great if you got kids so there's no fighting. Moving to the steering wheel, very pretty gloss black. You've got all your controls for your phone, for your cruise control, your lane departure warning, your heated steering wheel. Nice steering wheel. I wish it was a little thicker. It doesn't need to have a flat bottom. This is not a sports car. This is an SUV. All your controls for your window lifts are at the top of the door. The door locks are on the armrest as well as three memory settings on the driver's side. The Meridian surround sound is spectacular. Whether using Apple CarPlay or using satellite or whatever compressed or uncompressed music that you prefer, you'll be really thrilled that this is here. Plus it has a 4G Wi-Fi hub. Again, family vehicle makes a lot of sense. Another feature that's neat is you press this little button and you have additional storage here, which I like plus your full glove box down below which is pretty good size storage in the doors on all four doors so they've done a really nice job of thinking about what consumers are going to want so for features it has a lot just a few minor things i would change i gave it a nine when you're looking at the design of the Discovery, first off, I like the logo is here. It's a little large. It's one of the issues I have with a lot of brands. I like the aluminum grill. And LED headlights pretty much are a standard on luxury vehicles. And the fact that the vents are functional, that's also really important. The Discovery rides on 20 inch alloy wheels. They look really good and they match along nicely with this dark blue color. Along the side, I love the Discovery detail. One of the things I like about the Discovery is it matches along with the family. You know, when you look at a Range Rover, it has a higher roof section here and sometimes there's glass depending upon which trim level you buy but it gives that same flavor that same body line the design is really nice let's take a look at the back along the back of the discovery it's a bit large but that is necessary when you have an suv that in this case holds seven passengers which is optional of course the towing package they did a nice job integrating it i'm not the biggest fan of shifting the license plate over to the side that's a personal preference, but overall, as far as design, they did a really nice job and I gave it a nine. When you're looking at the quality of a vehicle, it's really important not just to look at the materials themselves, both outside and inside, but how they fit and finish works. For example, the gaps between the panels, the quality of the materials, how you think it's gonna hold up over the long haul, and having 30 years of plus experience of working on these vehicles, you kinda can pick out the cars right away that aren't gonna hold up that you probably don't wanna own when they're 10 years old. This is one of those vehicles you do want to own. The material is fantastic. Lots of aluminum, lots of alloy materials that are strong and they have great longevity. Looking at the interior, the leather, the quality, really impressive. I mean, when you look at quality overall, all the materials and everything they put together, they did a great job. For quality, I gave it a nine. It deserved it. 
One of the things I like about the Discovery is the fact that it's really flexible. It can meet your needs. You can get the seven passenger package, of course, it's an extra price, but you may need that, or the five passenger. But the fact is you can fold those seats down when you don't need them, and it gives you a nice flat area. This has a rubber mat on top because this is the loaded version, so it has the all weather and literally every option you can get, including the activity key, which again is a personal thing and part of those features that gives it a really good rating. But when you're looking at the overall back area space, there's quite a bit. The third row seat is a little bit tight, but that's to be expected in a vehicle of this size. But overall, as part of what you're getting, you've got outlets here, you've got power buttons, you have additional storage. In this particular vehicle, it has the optional full-size spare. I am a huge fan of that, and the fact that it's even an option is a major plus to me. You can get the entry-level vehicle with the V6 engine, but if you really want to step up and load this vehicle up with every possible option, you're looking at about $75,000 actually a pretty good value when you look at other vehicles in that category typically you have to go to a much higher price point to get that so for value i gave it a nine now when you're looking at your overall totals and people start saying well what about this and what about that or i wish this vehicle had that there's a lot of features it has and the only negatives i can think of is the slowness of the processor and that's when you change stations or want it to do something for you it's very customizable in that center screen but it is a bit slow Overall, the vehicle has literally everything you could ask for, including maintenance included, which most vehicles don't have. And the Land Rover maintenance package is absolutely a plus. And as far as I'm concerned, that's a deal closer for Land Rover. And they've been selling a lot of vehicles, both in Jaguar and Land Rover, because they're sister companies. By offering this full maintenance package, I really think it gives it good value. This gave the 2020 Land Rover Discovery HSE Diesel, my favorite version, fully loaded with all the goodies, a score of 91. That's a really high score. We've driven all the competitors to the Discovery and not many rank in that 91 Car Coach Reports rating score. So I give it a lot of credit. Now, if you have bought one before, we'd like to hear what your thoughts are. If you have any problems or issues, please put that down below. We're a community. We want to share and of course, help people that are thinking about buying one make good decisions. We appreciate your support on our Patreon page. Of course, your comments are always appreciated. Please follow us on all forms of social media at Lauren Fix and at Car Smarts. And we will look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.